In 2014, the temperature of Earth reached unprecedented levels, and since then the record has been usurped every year. Compared to the pre-industrial era, the gap has already reached more than 1 degree Celsius, and by 2100, the average will be exceeded by 3.2 degrees. It could seem an insignificant figure, but the consequences are global. Forest fires, hurricanes, and floods have become more frequent, and the largest glaciers are melting in Greenland and Antarctica. The sea level is gradually increasing, which will inevitably lead to the flooding of coastal areas. London, Copenhagen, Cairo, St. Petersburg, and the entire U.S. East Coast, including New York, will disappear from the world map. In this issue of Histography, we're going to tell you why America should almost be worrying most of all. Antarctica contains approximately 90% of all the freshwater resources in the world. Since the beginning of the 21st century, the average rate of glacial melting has reached 500 billion tons per year. According to rough estimates, if greenhouse gas emissions remain at the same level, then by 2070, the average global temperature will have risen by 5 degrees Celsius, and all of the planet's ice will melt. That's enough to raise sea levels by as much as 60 meters or 200 feet. Flood 2 will capture about 1.8 million square kilometers of land, and 187 million people will be left homeless. Firstly, settlements located on the coast will suffer. 10% of them are already struggling every year with constant floods, which will become widespread after 2060. In addition, the frequency of the currents of tropical cyclones will increase. Statistics show that until 2010, an average of 82 cyclones a year raged on Earth. But since 2014, there have been more than 91 of them, and this number is steadily growing. Climatologist Thomas Wall of the College of Marine Science Research has worked out how changes in nature will affect coastal cities. He calculated that in the 21st century, the coastal states of the United States will be at severe risk of flooding. The researcher created a flood model when both a downpour and a violent storm begin at the same time. As an example, he cited the tropical cyclone Doria, which swept over the country in 1971. Then there was 120 millimeters of precipitation per day and the average height of the tide during the storm reached four feet or 120 centimeters. The scientists took this data as a basis and came to a worrying conclusion. In the worst case scenario, which still is not so improbable, the United States will face a major problem. If such weather conditions become the norm in the near future, then flooding of New York will occur in 42 years. In the most optimistic scenario, the metropolis will sink in about 245 years. According to the most realistic scenario, the disaster will destroy all states along the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean in 105 years. The problem needs to be solved as soon as possible. Over the next 30 years, about 311,000 American homes will be flooded. The damage will amount to more than $120 billion and half a million Americans will become homeless. North and South Carolina will suffer the most, where 57 and 84,000 houses respectively are under the threat of flooding. In New Jersey, more than 190,000 buildings are in danger. So far in different parts of America, climate change is visible in its own way. In Rhode Island, water in Narragansett Bay has warmed by 1.6 degrees over 50 years, causing lobster catches to drop 75%. Along the coastline, the ocean is getting closer and closer to houses, and in some places, it even made people flee. Roy Carpenter's Beach, a collection of summer cottages on a half-kilometer plot, is disappearing faster than any other part of the state at one meter per year. In the 2010s, cottage owners tried to convince residents to move their houses away from the water, but they didn't want to lose their stunning ocean views. In late October 2012, Hurricane Sandy hit the coastline. 11 houses were seriously damaged, with three of them simply washed away by oncoming waves. Over time, the water rose so much that the tide began to pour over the concrete foundation and wooden pylons, making all construction work impossible. By 2030, hundreds of buildings on the coast of Rhode Island will be flooded several times a year. About 675 kilometers of the area is particularly vulnerable to the Gulf Stream a huge warm current that runs up the east coast from the Gulf of Mexico and turns right towards Greenland. 
According to scientists, the Gulf Stream is huge and contains more water than all the rivers in the world combined. Melting Arctic ice slowed the flow and pushed it closer to the east coast. Thus, the current in some areas raised the water temperature by more than 2 degrees. Some major cities in America, for example, Miami, are already experiencing problems with royal tides, after which the ocean spreads through the streets. The fact is that the city stands on limestone, a very porous rock through which salty water easily seeps. The nearby Everglades Park with fresh water swamps acts as a natural buffer against ocean invasion, but it gradually dries up and the force of the elements become more destructive. The mayor's office understands the complexity of the situation. Back in 2017, they launched the Miami Forever campaign, which included raising $192 million to modernize pumping stations, improve drainage systems, and erect barriers along the coastline. It didn't help much. In November 2020, the storm, Etta, flooded entire streets and houses in Broward, Miami-Dade, and Monroe counties. In some places, the water reached the knee. In addition to Miami, there are at least seven more U.S. cities that urgently need to build new infrastructure and come up with a reliable barrier from the ocean. New Orleans still hasn't recovered from the catastrophic damage caused by Hurricane Katrina in 2005. Situated in a river delta, some areas of which are four and a half meters or 15 feet below sea level, it's very vulnerable to flooding. In the past, New Orleans was surrounded by swampy areas that protected it from the elements. But draining the swamps for agricultural purposes has had a detrimental effect on the city. NASA research has shown that parts of the city are sinking at a rate of five centimeters a year. So the city's unlikely to survive by 2100. The situation is similar in Houston. Excessive pumping of groundwater has caused a change in pressure on the ground causing it to slowly sink. This was first reported after Hurricane Harvey, which swept over Texas in August 2017. As a result, 135,000 houses were damaged, 107 people died, and more than 30,000 residents were left homeless. Since Houston is not a coastal city, it's not threatened by rising sea levels. But the frequent hurricanes combined with the city's low location and subsidence will inevitably lead to flooding in some areas in the future. During Hurricane Sandy in October 2012, Atlantic City, New Jersey was hit hardest. At the worst moment of the storm, up to 80% of the city's area was underwater, and the water level reached two and a half meters, or eight feet. The city is one of the most vulnerable to flooding in the United States, but the next natural disaster could be fatal. Research by the scientific organization Climate Central shows that at least 37,000 residents will be forced to look for new housing. The neighboring metropolis, New York, will also lose some neighborhoods by 2100. The area with the greatest risk is Queens. Over the next 30 years, more than 2,700 houses and 7,000 residents will be subject to regular floods. And in another decade, 96,000 buildings will be under attack. It is of note that the residents of Manhattan have nothing to worry about. The area will hardly be affected, but it will become a real island in the middle of the ocean. But in Charleston, South Carolina, a local newspaper wrote back in 2010 that in 40 years, the town would turn into a half-sunken ghost town. Based on frequent flooding, the ominous prediction is coming true with a 3.7 meter rise in water level, 77% of the city will be underwater, about 64,000 residents affected by the flooding. In Boston, by the beginning of the 22nd century, every sixth house will go underwater. The city may not be completely flooded, but it will certainly cease to exist as we know it. The most conservative estimates are that with a 1.8 meter rise in sea level, Boston will experience at least one major flood by 2050. The rising water level in the future may collapse on another large city in the Bay, Seattle. By 2050, most areas will be flooded. Georgetown, South Park, Harbor Island, Interbay, Golden Garden. Finally, residents of Virginia Beach, Virginia are seeing one of the highest rates of sea level rise on the East Coast in 2020. The city is located at the junction of the Atlantic Ocean and the Chesapeake Bay. When a violent storm breaks out, both bodies of water will start being destructive. By 2100, the sea level will rise 3.7 meters there. As early as 2018, Hurricane Florence showed what the city will look like in the future, a wasteland flooded with water. Are Americans ready for this future? 
Scientists predict that by 2047, air temperatures around the world will reach unprecedented highs, and those places that were recently cold will turn into new resorts. They will become a climatic refuge for those whose homes will become victims of the flood. The most promising state, Alaska, which will be much less affected by global warming. Also, residents of the coastal strip in the Pacific Northwest may not worry. For example, Portland and its environs. They rise above sea level, so they will not be affected as much by flooding. According to scientists, this is where global warming migrants should go. Climate change seems distant and unrealistic until it's too late. However, mankind has a chance for salvation. Some experts believe that global warming will soon cause a new ice age. When the temperature reaches a critically high point, an oceanic apocalypse will begin. The rapidly melting glaciers will finally disrupt the circulation of warm currents and first of all, the Gulf Stream, which has already lost its rhythm. Heat will not be able to travel from the equator to Europe and America, which will lower temperatures on the continents. So what do you think? Will scientists be able to stop the flood to or a new ice age? Share your opinion in the comments. As always, don't forget to like, share the video with your friends, and subscribe. See you next time.